What's up, everybody? We back at it again with another Magnum Quest video. This will be the second Hero Spotlight video in the series. I saw quite a number of hairy responses, so just like Sir, I'm going to be covering the gear sets, the star map, the runes, the skills, the popular setups, and where I think they rank in terms of uh, priority for their faction. Let's get it. <laughs> I just wanted to briefly mention I am playing this game on Bluestacks. If you didn't know what Bluestacks is, it's an Android emulating platform PC, uh, meaning it allows you to play your phone games on a faster processing, bigger screen, and also comes with a lot of nifty perks that I'll get into. If you're interested, head over to Bluestacks.com and click on download Bluestacks. If you're looking specifically for Magnum Quest, if you want to help support this channel, um, I will have a specific link for this in my pinned comment. Much appreciated to anyone who uses it. If you scroll down, you can read the game features for the highlights of what Bluestacks can offer you uh, when playing Magnum Quest such as macros, high FPS, and the ability to not have your phone's battery drain or heat up. Alright, so back to the video, let's discuss Harry. Um, for gear sets, you have two solid options, but the one I've been using is the Courage set. This set gives at two set pieces you gain 6% attack, 3 set pieces you gain 20% def, and at 4 set pieces you gain 15% HP. Um, the reason I use this is because Harry's ultimate attack buff is based off Harry's attack, so I want my heroes to get the most out of this, and also the reason why I focus the attack stat in his star map that I'm going to get to after, while it also provides some nice tank stats of def and HP. The other set I think you can utilize is the Guardian. Um, this set gives at 2 set pieces you gain health recovery per second, uh, 3 set pieces you gain uh, minus physical damage taken, and at 4 set pieces you gain critical resistance. Um, I consider this a second option because the stats are okay, uh, but I can get those off of rune stats. Just remember the further you are in the game, uh, the less those plus enhancements on your gear make a difference, uh, since it doesn't scale as you get higher. I wouldn't say it's entirely not warranted, but the stat boost isn't as big of a problem as I thought initially when I was talking about the mistake of gear set on my Sir. So for rune options, um, I really only see one rune fitting my playstyle of Harry, and that's the green energy rune. I'll use gold runes for my examples, but if you have bronze or silver, it's essentially the same thing, just less levels available and the stats will be less as well. Um, so at level 3, the energy gain per second increases to 20 points. You want Harry to reach his ultimate fast because this is what's going to buff your team with attack and haste. Haste, I've said many times, is the best stat in this game and will boost your hero's DPS plus allow your supports to get their heals and CC off faster. So stats to be looking for on the rune. Um, with the newly added rune stats, I will be updating a runes video going into better detail with more information this time as I've been talking to a lot of experienced players. But the rune stat order I'd go for is hit ER, so there seems to be a bit of confusion here of what this is exactly. But if you click on the wording like this, it's going to bring up the description. There is still translation problems in this game, but essentially what this stat does is enhance your hero's energy recovery percentage when they are hit by the enemy's attacks, autos, and skills. So for me, I would go maybe like uh, hit ER, then dodge, and then minus damage. Um, I prefer this one rather than the specific physical or magical, just so I can utilize both, even if it is less than a solo stat of 10% to 6%. Um, the stats, like I said, are less for the other quality of runes like bronze and silver. Another decent option is crit resistance. You can't really go wrong with adding to your resistance to being critted. Um, and then obviously the fifth stat on your gold rune, you're going to pray for haste. I probably will consider rerolling this rune if I ever get some dodge materials for the reconstruction to replace maybe damage or crit resistance, but the chances are so low to reroll the stat you want. Now let's dive into his star map. Um, at the first tier, the bronze, I went with attack like I said to boost his ultimate attack buff, but you may choose to do this differently like with def or HP. Um, it depends how you want to build your Harry. Since I use him a lot on bosses and at the stage of the game I'm in, CC is much more important, I'll take those buffs for increased damage. Then up top I went with crit resistance, um, here I think you could also go with minus physical damage taken. Um, the reason I decided to go with crit resistance is because it's universal, meaning it doesn't matter if they're physical or intelligence, this is directly affecting their ability to crit. If you have more crit resistance than the enemy has crit percentage, they will not crit you. Um, or if you don't, then whatever values you have just means they are less likely to do so. Next, I went with attack for the mentioned reason. Um, down below, I went with dodge. Now, here's my dilemma. Um, dodge is your chance to avoid enemies' attacks, but having too high of a dodge 
compared to the enemy's hit may result in your hero being hit a lot less, meaning their energy recovery suffers. Um, I'm probably overthinking this because of all the heroes that give energy buffs like Harry with Haste, Sinia, Fi, Amelia, you got your green runes, etc. So I don't think it will matter too much, but comment down below your thoughts about this. As for the second act of skill, I went with Armor of Confusion. Um, each time the hero is attacked, which will be a lot since he's a frontliner, it lowers the accuracy of all surrounding enemies by 20 points for 3 seconds, so this just isn't the attacker. This skill can be triggered once every 5 seconds, which is pretty good, meaning you only have a 2 second downtime. Lowering the enemy's accuracy allows Harry to stay alive longer and your heroes. The other skills like shiny armor, it can only be triggered once, he already gets a defense boost from his skills, um, and this is only affecting him. Uh, weakening touch, a 10% cap isn't a good trade-off compared to all the benefit that Armor of Confusion brings with a nearly 100% uptime. Moving over to the second tier, the silver. Um, first node, same idea, I went with attack. Uh, up here I went with attack. Here dodge. Down here attack. Um, and finally this node, I'll probably reset eventually and go with dodge. Um, I think dodge will trump crit resistance. I probably clicked on this late at night and then realized crap now i have to reset and figured i'd do it another time now for the third act of skill blessing of power um the hero regenerates two percent of max hp for 10 seconds when his hp drops below 40 percent for the first time you can't complain with this and it's not really like you have a choice since this is the only option um it improves his survivability moving over to the final tier the gold um first note i'll probably go with crit resistance for my reasoning set already up top i'm gonna go with attack um here i'll go with dodge and dodge once again. As for the final act of skill, out of the three options, I feel enhanced therapy is your best bet. When applying a positive effect to an ally, positive effect means like Fi's haste buff at the beginning of the battle or Harry's ultimate. Or simply put, it's those little blue buff icons you see on your hero's portrait like this. The recipient gains an additional random buff, so for Harry's example, all your heroes plus 30% attack, plus 30% defense, plus 30 points of accuracy, or plus 30 points of dodge. Um, this skill can be triggered at most once every 8 seconds. The same buff can stack up to at most 3 times and last 8 seconds. So there's a bit of RNG involved in what heroes get what buff. Um, hence why your damage results on bosses for example may vary. Um, however with the right setup, Harry rune stats, you can probably have his ultimate up each time before the 8 second timer expires so this is a 100% uptime active skill. Um, if you get lucky and say the plus 30% attack goes to your DPS each time, that's a serious damage boost right there. Looking at the other two options, Veteran Instinct isn't bad, but comparing that to Enhanced Therapy with all the benefits, uh, regardless of it being RNG, I wouldn't take this. Um, and then this one, Shield of Blessing, is a no for me. Alright, so now let's get into the popular setups. Uh, so depending on the point of the game you're in, these may vary. Um, for a chapter adventure, regular dungeon, as like a starter setup, I think I use this on my second account, uh, would be utilizing Fair, Ares, Gaia behind Fair, then Harry, and then Fi. If you feel like you're dying too fast, you can opt for a more CC and survivability option, maybe either taking out Ares, swap with Harry, um, and put in Alowin or Ion. If you are past the point of needing Gaia, then you can simply drop her out for Ares. Harry works well in a lot of setups, but sometimes I need to drop him for more CC, um, such as uh, in this setup example, I dropped him for Oshishi. Sir is also a great choice to swap in, or maybe like Dracula as a fair alternative, uh, to send Harry from the front line into the enemy team, so it's easier to hit more surrounding enemies. Moving over to bosses, I don't want to cover too much here because this week I have an endgame boss video coming out where I'm going to give 3-4 to four solid setups for Guild Frost Peak boss and then ones for Puppet Corpse as well to maximize your damage output. Harry will be a must. But in general, I would run 3 DPS, so Sir, and then the other 2 DPS are up to you. They can be like Fang, Histo, Winden, Gilla, uh, Ares. There's a lot of possibilities I'm going to be covering more in depth with 2 supports. Uh, one of them being Harry, and then the other can be like Sinia or Amelia. If survivability is an issue, you can drop one DPS for another added support like Arthur. Hero positioning for bosses, chapter adventure, dungeon um, are very important, so play around with them until you find one that works best for you, either on the boss or the enemy stage that you are facing. Moving on to his skills, um, healing noise. Harry orders little one to stomp the ground, 
lowering haste of all surrounding enemies while restoring Harry's HP based off the damage taken. This is a pretty crazy skill right here. Lowering haste slows down the enemy's energy gain, meaning more time is needed to reach their ultimates and have their regular skills come off cooldown. And depending on the hero setup and positioning can affect all of them while giving him a heal as well. Devil's Teamwork um, one of the reasons why Harry is naturally tanky, with each allied unit aside from Harry present on the battlefield, Harry's defense increases and damage intake decreases. This is a very nice skill to start off with some beefy tank uh, boosted stats to allow him to survive and provide all the awesome utility he has for the team and against the enemy. Um, gut Punch Harry orders Little One to throw a heavy punch at a target, applying the knockdown effect and making that enemy take more damage. However, what makes this skill great is at level 4, if the target is killed while this skill is active, the deliverer of the killing blow gains crit chance and critical damage. Typically in the setups I gave as examples, that would be uh, some of your top DPS like Ares, Gaia, Phi, um, or Sir, which further boosts them making the stage easier, if they stay alive that is. And finally, his ultimate Master of War. Um, Harry beats the drums, dealing damage to surrounding enemies and inspiring all surrounded allied units, gaining attack and haste. Uh, the gold seal of approval with this skill was a huge game changer when they introduced this hero into the game. Um, buffing your heroes with both attack and haste is why you see him everywhere. So where does Harry rank in terms of ascension um, and importance priority for the wild faction? Um, so for me, ascension priority, I would place him second just after Ares. Now you don't need to get them maxed before moving on to another hero. Some do fine with 3 stars, 4 stars, etc. I would focus on getting Ares to 6 stars first, and then probably work on Harry depending on how your summon luck went, and what you want to focus on the game. Another runner up would be like Hista. So for faction importance, because these are two different things, uh, the hero can have low ascension priority, but still do their job just fine and be ranked high in faction importance. I would give him a second ranking as well, just after Ares. Harry overall is an S plus tier hero and will make your overall time playing Magnum Quest much better because of the benefits I've mentioned in this video. And finally looking into his story, after reading this it looks like Harry's a rock star. Um, he's a goblin just trying to put on a show playing the role of a jester. Little One, the, the creature or monster, um, saved Harry in a battle after being injured. They both escaped and I guess they've just been rocking out to those sweet drums ever since. I wonder if for a skin idea they would uh, maybe have him in an outfit of a jester um, and then maybe have little one with some kind of party color war paint. Could be neat. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for future videos and stay tuned for the next one.